So one of the challenges right now is that we have our digital avatar. And our digital avatar, I'm not talking still with the avatars, which, like I said, in Metaverse is going to be much more advanced and, and actually disclose that I'm building this technology myself. But the challenge is that we have already a data avatar. There's a large data avatar that Google and all these guys have, Dinesh and everyone listening to us. And you can buy this data. There's a price for that. And then, of course, when you start configuring the ID of this data, which is what you guys are doing in Concordia, this is a big thing. And I think this is the biggest thing in the internet because there's no ID. There's no global ID for us. And this is fragmented for us. Actually, Denmark, I live six years between Denmark and Sweden. There's a personal number. You actually are more advanced on that than it was done without blockchain. But uh, the point is that is that, that is a good reflection, but and it only works for your country. So the point right now is that this is digital ID in the physical world and the digital world is going to be leapfrog with the metaverse because the metaverse technology, for instance, just by 2030 will be a $13 trillion industry, which is uh, 10 times bigger than actually all the crypto in the world. So, uh, and this is actually Citibank research. So how do you see this? Because I think this is the convergence of data. And I think this is where Concordium can make a big impact, but as well as where the industry needs to go a step ahead. Because it's like you said, it's not just uh, solving the speculation or creating another speculation on the center land or sandbox, but creating a real case is utility. And you mentioned utility before, which I think is for me the most important. Yeah, I, w I would say it. I am a strong believer in something metaverse, right? This is clear that our technology is driving us towards with some speed towards a, a place where we can have quite meaningful experiences in a digital world. And if you think that 20, 30, 40 years into the future, I actually think that we'll be spending a very substantial amount of our time in, 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 in real, real life situations, but in, in the metaverse, right? And they will be very genuine and they may actually give us the opportunity to experience, experience lots of things that we wouldn't be able to, to experience in, in our everyday physical life, if you will. So I'm a big believer and that can only get ever, ever bigger, I think, maybe to the point that in in a hundred years, you know, we may be living on nearly all of our existence there because it'd be awful lot more exciting than walking up and down your local street, right? So uh, so that is a movement, no question. Uh, we're not very far in that movement. It's not all that convincing yet, but but it will come. And that means, of course, that shops will want to sell in there. People want to do business. People want to meet other people uh, socially uh, in, in, in many ways, right? And, and as that becomes more and more con you know, consuming of, of the time we spend in the real world or the traditional physical world, there's nothing unreal as such about a, a virtual universe, in my view, is also real. But, but you know what I mean, right? Uh, there, of course, uh, in the in the in the physical world, if I meet you on the street and I know how you look, you know, I can be pretty sure, unless you have a one double, you know, that it is actually you, right? Whereas uh, in a metaverse, I could have somebody with a perfect avatar of you, and I would uh, probably be sure it was you, but it could be somebody entirely different, right? And and for that, of course, you need to to have some possibility of identification, right? You have to have this option to be able to prove to each other who who we are. It could also be that you want to look like a dinosaur and I want to look like an elephant, but 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 we could still prove that we were genius and last, right? And and the more important, the more the bigger part of our economy that becomes. Uh, the more important that becomes, right? And, and the more of our lives that are lived in these environments, which I think for people that are very young today will be a very substantial part of their lives, uh, the more important all these things are. The other thing that's very important is, uh, you know, the assets in there. I mean, can you really prove that there's only one of these and one of these or a hundred of these or whatever the number is? Uh, Today, no. I mean, if you're going to a game, you know, you can buy all this extra stuff that they make lots of money on. But can you be 100% sure that they don't just print another thousand or, or that there are more in existence than, 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 uh, than you think, right? Uh, there, there's actually quite a bit of pushback from the big gaming publishers because they, they have this economy today and they don't see any particular benefit in in a blockchain coming in and messing with, with a nice economy that they have. 
but the gamers themselves should be increasingly demanding that they're not at the moment, which I, I fully understand the publishers, but I don't really understand the gamers because they, some of these guys are the same guys that say, oh, we're so reliant on single points of failures in banks. They say, well, you're dependent on a single point of failure in a game, right? Uh, uh, so I would have thought that they have a strong interest in the economy becoming more independent, more safe, uh, more secure from that particular from that particular single point of failure that they're now interacting with, right? So in short, I think the metaverse is big, whatever it is, because there's going to be many, many attempts at building this and maybe in a far future, something something merging around a very large you know, uh, metaverse, but there'll still be lots of side pockets without question. Uh, but inside that, if it becomes very important, you, you, need, you need security. And actually we have the, we have the opportunity here to, to have a much safer world, you know, because we can know who we're dealing with. We can know whether they own or don't own the things they, they say that they own. We, we can know that the stuff they're selling us is not counterfeit or fraudulent, you know. So actually, I think uh, well thought through blockchain uh, projects, they are a great enhancer of that, a great enhancer of trust and people feeling much more comfortable to, to put some of the economy in that direction, which should be in, in all the commercial organizations' interest. If you get a message from somebody on Instagram or Facebook Messenger or something like that, and it's a little bit odd or it doesn't sound like like the friend you think it is, uh, I mean, you go and you go and check that, right? You're concerned. You may not even answer a person that uh, that you don't know, right? Uh, because you have no way of verifying their their credentials, right? Uh, and frankly, it happens to me many times a year. Somebody makes a fake profile on Instagram or they make a fake profile on Facebook and they take a little bit of my CV and a picture of me and uh, repost my last 10 posts. And then they start sending messages out to my friends, uh, my social media friends, my, my people that I interact with and saying, you know, I have a special deal for you. If you send me 10 bucks, I'll send you a Bitcoin or something like that, right? So we don't have that trust today. And then I certainly, if I see something from somebody where the name is clearly fake and they got zero followers and they were initiated yesterday, that's like a danger signal, right? Uh, so uh, we, we can solve all these problems. I mean, we could solve them today. But I think you know one thing is who writes you on Instagram or who writes you on a Facebook Messenger, right? But uh, but if you're spending a lot of your economy and a lot of your time in a metaverse or for that matter in a, one of the social media, you know, we, we we can't really do that comfortably because we we're so unsure about what we're dealing with, right? And we're unsure if people have the rights of what they're trying to flock. We're I'm sure they are who they claim to be, etc. Right. Uh, so I, I think we have a lot to offer this industry from the blockchain space to make everybody more comfortable interacting and hence being more active users and, and of higher economic value to these platforms. Right. I completely agree. And it's really a key element. I think in the end of the day, it's about trust. Anything that is money or value is about trust. But I think it's that the new directions will be depending on what we do now. 